that the government promised during the election, as in the election, this the political rally, they promised them to give them good hospital, good shelter, good school, and those that are not working, they promised them to be giving them monthly allowance. <laughs> Yo guys, it's another day and welcome back to another video, wherever you are, special greetings to you and don't forget if today is your first time, please do me a favor by subscribing to the channel, also don't forget to hit on the notification bell whenever you draw video, you can also get it and watch. In today's video, we are going to be looking at how the president of the EU warns the European countries that has put in restrictions on their borders and also Cote d'Ivoire has been the first African country to get the COVID-19 vaccine and also the youth of Nigeria has introduced a fast growing business which is trending now in Nigeria. We are going to talk about this business that the youth are doing now in Nigeria which is boasting or which is the business that Nigerian youth are doing now. So guys without wasting much time let's do this thing. Two guys, but before I start this video, let me tell you that if you need any calf, then I am recommending Great Grace Service Calf for you. You can call them or you can just write them even in your house and they will do your service for you. They offer services like all the calf service. If you need any bonus, if you want to apply any bonus, if you want to renew your document, if you want any cheap flight ticket to go back to your country, if you need cheap car insurance they will do this thing for you their services are many you can call them on plus three nine three eight nine four four six three five one five the number is plus three nine three eight nine four four six three five one five that is the number of great gray scarf service and you can also follow them on youtube great gray scarf service on facebook great gray scarf service and also on instagram you can follow them and they can deliver good services for you as scarf now let's move on to the main reason why we are here the president of the european Commission who is lying the other names if you did not get good semo and ogbono soup I don't think you can mention them But if I say the president of the European Commission, I know you all know and her picture is also Here what is this woman saying this woman is saying the European countries that has put in Restrictions on their borders. They should retrieve these restrictions so that they can allow people to move she know that COVID-19 is there, but you cannot tell them that you are closing your borders. Maybe somebody may be having some important thing to do in the country, but because of these restrictions on your borders, people cannot enter. So this woman is saying she is giving these countries, there are some countries that they have put in these restrictions on their borders, and I'm going to give you these countries, and you are going to know which countries are these countries that has put in restrictions on their borders. This woman is saying she is giving them 10 days to respond to her message that she is giving them to retrieve back these uh, restrictions on their borders. They said, they said Belgium, Denmark, Finland, Germany, Hungary, and Sweden uh, put on notice of a curbs to free movement. They said Brussels has put six EU member states on notice that they are tight COVID border restriction, including exit and entry bans, should be lifted over fears of a wider breakdown in the bloc's free movement of people and goods. Belgium, Denmark, Finland, Germany, Hungary, and Sweden have been given 10 days to respond to the European Commission's concern that they have breached commonly agreed coronavirus guidelines. So this is what this woman is telling them to respond to lift borders so that people can enter and people can also exit from the country i think the restrictions are too much because as i said before there are some countries maybe you have something to go and do there because of these restrictions you cannot go so this is what is coming from that woman and let's go and watch her video when we are back we will give you the rest of the update so, so uh, we have this been discussing uh, these topics um 
So uh, I think it is uh, very important to keep in mind that there are um, council recommendations that unanimously uh, the member states have agreed upon, I think, three weeks ago, um, on how to deal uh, with cross-border topics and how to deal also with uh, the occurrence of variants. Um, I, uh, I see that uh, there's always a conflict between the health situation and the free movement uh, that has to be, um, has to be solved um, on a uh, case-by-case basis, but um, the restrictions have to be uh, proportionate. That is very important. So, um, for example, if you look at the truck drivers, um, there was a good reason why we introduced in spring the green lanes. They are crucial to keep the um, single market open and the flow of goods um, within the single market. So we strongly recommend um, to keep these green lanes open. We see that the truck drivers, if you look at the truck driver population and if you look at the um, testing scenario, they have a very low uh, risk of infection, lower than the general population. So uh, there are reasons why these green lanes are in place and they do work. And I also strongly emphasize that we need solutions for the cross-border workers. Um, we have uh, regions that are dependent that uh, workers can cross the borders. A classical example is Luxembourg, where the healthcare sector uh, would just not function anymore if the cross-border uh, workers from the neighboring countries couldn't com commute every day uh, to their, their workplace in the um, hospitals in Luxembourg. Berg. So um, what I see is um, that uh, uh, after the initial difficulties, now it's more differentiated, the restriction of movement. I think the most important part is that the different regions, the different member states speak with each other and stick to the recommendations and then find a solution appropriate to the epidemiological situation. Thank you, Madam President. Yeah, guys, I hope you have seen the video. So that is what is coming from this woman that they should lift, these bands that they have put in on their bodies so that people can move on. She said COVID-19 is real, but they should know how they are going to treat the pandemic. It's not that closing your border is going to stop this COVID-19. So that is what is coming from that side. And now let's move on to the next story. Cote d'Ivoire happens to be the first country, the first African country to get the COVID-19 vaccine to treat this virus things in Africa. And they are thanking or they are giving thanks, they are giving credit to the Cote d'Ivoire government who has tried to get this COVID-19 for his country. Oga, I salute you. Thank you for the great job that you have done. You have done amazing job to, I mean, even your country and Africa as a whole, you have you have shown that you are nothing but a good leader who cares or who cares of your people. So this vaccines has arrived and they are going to start distributing or they are going to start giving it to people on Monday. So guys, let's go and watch that video. When we are back, we will give you the rest of the update. So stay tuned. It is a great pleasure today to have had this opportunity to welcome the arrival of the vaccines of um, uh, AstraZeneca. Uh, from India. Uh, you have seen uh, today the level of, of interest, I think, from partners and from government. Uh, they were uh, very happy to have had uh, this opportunity to receive uh, uh, the vaccines. Uh, we are very happy as well that from, from Monday we will start the actual vaccination campaign. This is a credit to the government of Cote d'Ivoire for everything they have done in the battle against uh, COVID, but also everything they have done to facilitate the arrival of these vaccines. Uh, we will be working very closely with them to ensure uh, that all of the, the first uh, target groups, uh, healthcare workers, teachers, security forces and vulnerable groups will receive these vaccines uh, in a manner uh, equitable and, in, in, uh, uh, in, and rapidly. And so it is really a, a grand pleasure that we have managed to, uh, to, uh, to do this with Tutti organization of, of UNICEF. And I really want to thank uh, everyone around the world that uh, supported this uh, this process uh, and it, it'll we will keep you informed as we move ahead what's most important is that every uh, everyone who wants to have the vaccine will have access to the vaccine and we will be ensuring with the government uh, working closely with them to help that uh, to help that happen 
Yeah, guys, I hope you have seen the video. So that is Côte d'Ivoire COVID-19 vaccines that has arrived and they are giving the credit to the president who have worked hard with the UNICEF to get this COVID-19 vaccine. And now let's move on to the next story. Now, the business in Nigeria now is kidnapping. If you are not a founder of a kidnapper, you are not going to get money. The youth who have applied for job and they are not taking them. People who are expecting government to, I mean, create job opportunities. People who are expecting government to pay them, I mean, allowances if even they are not working but it's not happening that way so they have decided to kidnap people less than a month this kidnapping thing happened and now over 300 students which is a secondary school guest has been also i mean kidnapped and also in a bus people has also been kidnapped so Guys, it's not easy at all. I don't know what is going on in Nigeria because this is not the first time this thing is happening. This is not the second time this thing is happening. And this is not the third time this thing is happening. But it seems the government don't see these things that are happening. Because if you are a government and you cannot give the security to your country people, you cannot give security to citizens, you have failed in the first process because you have to give security to each and every citizen in that country. And now the police and the army are there, but these things are still happening in the country. Which kind of government are you? Which kind of country do you want to rule? Sometimes African politics, I don't understand. I remember one time the president of Ghana was saying the time when he was in the opposition, he said, we are sitting on money, but we are hungry. But now, you know, he is the president. But I am asking whether we are not still sitting on that money and we are not hungry. Still, Ghana is still sitting on that money, but we are hungry. Sometimes they will use some propaganda thing. They will use I don't know what is warring African leaders. Now they have kidnapped these students. They have also kidnapped people who are traveling. So now to travel in Nigeria is a big problem for you because you don't know whether you will reach your destination or you are not going to reach your destination. So guys, let's go and watch that first video of the over 300 students that they have kidnapped. And when we are back, we will give you the rest of the update. So stay tuned. We begin then with that breaking news out of northwestern Nigeria, where more than 300 schoolgirls have been kidnapped. It happened in Zamfara State. Gunmen arrived at night, shooting sporadically, and took the girls into the bush. Let's go live now to Minna in central Nigeria. Al Jazeera's Ahmed Idris is there. Tell us more about uh, what happened, uh, Ahmed. Well, Adrian, like you said in the introduction, the gunman arrived shortly after midnight and operated for at least an hour. Uh, after that, they herded uh, more than 300 girls into uh, the bushes and uh, disappeared. I spoke to the police public relations officer uh, in the past hour, and he told me that they are on their way to, the, um, uh, to Jangebe where the incident happened. Meanwhile, at the school, uh, we were able to get in touch with a local who said a census is currently being undertaken. Uh, they, will, they will need probably an hour or so to get around the figures that they are working with in terms of the numbers of students abducted. And this is uh, actually an all-girls school, Adrian. And uh, the number of um, abduction, if really confirmed, is far much higher that one we witnessed in Chibok about uh, in 2014, that's close to uh, seven years ago. And uh, right now, we spoke to the police public relations officer a short while ago, and he said they are trying to reach out to the communities and also see what they can do to salvage the situation in terms of chasing after the bandits and uh, getting the girls back. However, this is a state that has prided itself in negotiating with the bandits. Uh, yesterday, uh, some bandits or group of armed men submitted their weapons, and then early this morning we heard this incident in Jangebe. So it's a very dicey situation. A lot of people are questioning uh, the rationale behind negotiating with criminals like this, which will embolden them in terms of uh, money, getting money from the government, or also uh, rearming themselves and conducting more daring attacks. We are currently in Mina, where for 10 days now, 
parents are missing more than uh, two dozen children. Uh, the number is yet to be ascertained. The government insists that 27 students have been taken. But a lot of people are saying that the number is quite higher than that. So up to now, the negotiation process between the Niger State government and the bandits is still stalemated. So it's, it's a difficult situation dealing with this. And right as we speak now, the Nigerian security forces, the military and the police are all overstretched dealing with so many fires in so many places, Adrian. Al Jazeera's Ahmed Idris reporting live there from Mina in central Nigeria. Ahmed, many thanks. Guys, I hope you have seen the video. So that was the over 300 students that they have kidnapped in Mina and also people who were in bars that they have also kidnapped. Let's go and watch that video too. When we are back, we will give you the rest of the update. So stay tuned. Six members of the Abdus Salam family were among the 53 passengers kidnapped from a bus in Nigeria's Niger state. Now free, they were able to offer an insight into the minds of the abductors. They say we are not after you, we are, we are after the government. We now ask them, what did the government do to you? They said government promised them and they failed it. What did, what did the government promise? They now tell us that the government promised during the election, as in the election, this the political rally, they promised them to give them good hospital, good shelter, good school. And those that are not working, you promise them to be giving them monthly allowance. Why are you doing this to us? Hawa and others were forced to walk barefoot for 60 kilometers to a camp, where she says torture and other abuses were common. They were telling us that they are going to kill us, and they mean it. We were killing people two, 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 two. From Saturday, that is on Saturday, they will start killing us on Sunday. If your parents did not come and pick you, we will start killing you. On Sunday. She says the gang who snatched them seem well connected to highly placed individuals. Kidnapping is currently Nigeria's biggest and fastest growing criminal enterprise. Dozens of people are abducted every day and families are forced to pay thousands of dollars in ransom. Here at one of Mina's bus stations, passengers say they set off on a journey without knowing whether they will reach their destination. Hundreds have ended up in the hands of kidnappers. Bus operators say there are now fewer passengers, and only those who need to travel. In the town of Kagara, at least 52 students, teachers and family members were taken more than a week ago. As each day passes, hope is fading for a speedy and safe return. The government tries to offer some reassurance. We have gone very far. Uh, we have been able, you know, using the same platform that we use, you know, for the, for the bus, uh, you know, occupants. Uh, we have also reached out you know, to some major stakeholders you know, within the forest. And uh, you know, we are, it's a discussion that is very slow, uh, but we believe that you know, eventually it will bring some you know, uh, positive results. The time is going and, uh, That's a little comfort is, is for the parents being, of the missing uh, students. Uh, the primary objective of uh, government everywhere in the world is to provide security uh, to its people. And uh, clearly, it's systematic in Nigeria. The security has collapsed. And uh, we are losing hope in the government, uh, not only at the state level, but even at the federal level. Kagara is becoming increasingly isolated. Few will risk traveling there now, just the security forces and locals who have nowhere else to go. Ahmed Idris, Al Jazeera, Mina, Nigeria. Yeah, guys, I hope you have seen the video. So what the kidnappers was asking them was they are over the government. They are over the government. They are not over these people. But you, if they kidnapped you, you need to come and pay money before they will leave you because the government refused to create job opportunities for the youth. Government failed to, I mean, give people who are deserving or people who deserve to work. It's only Nigeria that you will see that Emeka and Osas went to the same university have the same resource, but Osas is working as minister and also MP for Casina West because he has somebody in government, but Emeka is still in the house, but they have the same result because Emeka don't know somebody in the government. He is still in the house, but Osas, who knows somebody in government, is minister of finance and also MP 
for Casina West. That is Africa for you. So guys, this is the update I have for you today. The name still remains Official Cracker on YouTube, Official Cracker on Facebook, Official underscore Cracker One on Instagram. If you have any question, you can drop it there and we can answer it for you and as i said before great great scarf service you can just go there and try to i mean follow these people and they will give you a good service you can call them on plus three nine three eight nine four four six three five one five so guys till we meet again in the next video stay safe and stay blessed peace out